just to make sure everything was clear, I kind of like summarized everything that we discussed up to now about resistances. So looking into the base, I see R pi, looking into the collector, I see R naught, and looking into the emitter, assuming that no early effect, I see one over GM. So like in the case of R out of a transistor, like a, a, a common emitter uh, gain stage, we had a resistance here, and that was connected to VCC, which is an AC ground. So you can now see that why we got R naught in parallel with RC, right? Because, well, looking into here, I have one resistance. Looking down, I see R naught. Looking up, I see, I see RC, and they're in parallel. So I see RC in parallel with R naught, okay? But uh, that's irrelevant to what, what I'm trying to sum summarize here. What I'm trying to say here is that uh, looking into different terminals of a transistor, you see these kind of resistances, and that's always true. So you don't really need to care about uh, like the rest of the circuit. As long as you're looking into the base of a transistor and there's nothing in the emitter in terms of resistance, you're just going to see R pi. Okay. Uh, by the way, this notation is just might be looking not familiar to you. It just means that it's an AC ground. Okay. So uh, we're not really talking about the ground ground, we're talking about the small signal ground. So now that we have learned about gain, input impedance, output impedance, and all these kind of parameters and how to define them and how to find their expressions, let's go back and revisit the idea of a design trade-off. I told you guys that um, we're not going to basically make decisions about like uh, if, I, if I have an expression for voltage gain, if I want to increase it, I'm not going to increase it without actually thinking about other parameters and how my decisions are going to affect those parameters. Okay, so just to remind you, we're still talking about the common emitter amplifier. So a circuit like this, emitter to ground, a collector, we have V out at the collector, there's an RC here, and there's a VCC up here, and the input is connected to, so this V in is connected to the base. Okay, and uh, we said that for this, for this amplifier, we have a gain that is equal to negative GM times R0 in parallel with RC. If there was no early effect, this R0 would have been infinity, so this would have been just negative GMRC. Uh, we have a Rn or Zn, the input resistance or input impedance that is equal to R pi, which is equal to beta divided by GM by definition. And we have an R out that is equal to um, RC in parallel with R0. Again, if there is no early effect, this would be just RC. And then imagine that you have this gain expression and somebody asks you to increase the gain by a factor of two. And we said that, well, I could increase it by increasing GM by a factor of two, but I know that GM is IC over VT, right? So if I increase GM by a factor of two, uh, in a sense, I'm actually increasing the DC current of my collector or the power consumption of my device my circuit by by a factor of two that's something that i don't like so that's something that i need to know so i have to decide if i want the gain to be twice big or i want the power to be twice as big i cannot have uh twice the gain without any cost without paying the cost in terms of power consumption and also i knew that basically uh my the voltage swing that i have at the output is going to be rcic meaning that if i increase ic I know that RCIC will increase, therefore the voltage across this resistor is going to be, this is RCIC, right? This voltage is going to be increased, therefore I might actually get into a saturation region. So I cannot really increase IC, even if I don't care about power, I cannot just increase IC without caring about not going to saturation. The other way to actually increase this gain was RC. Again, if I wanted to increase RC, I should have been uh, I should I should have been really uh, worried about not going to saturation, right? The other thing that when I increase RC it gets worse is the R out, right? So if I increase RC, what happens is that my R out is increasing, right? Because R out is RC in parallel with R not. So if I'm increasing RC, in a sense, I'm increasing R out. And remember, R out I want it to be as as small as possible, ideally zero, right? So if I'm increasing RC. I'm having worse and worse R out. And if you remember the example that we had with the audio amplifier, we can go back and check if we increased, when we increased R out from zero to eight or 16 ohms, 
we saw that although my gain of the ampl but the gain of amplifier was still 10 the signal level that reached the speaker was actually decreased attenuated by a by the factor of like i don't know by a factor of two or three right depending on how much we are increasing our out so we might think that we're increasing the gain by increasing rc but what happens is that the gain of the amplifier increases but then the actual signal that reaches the load which is the speaker is going to be it, it might not increase or it might even decrease if we do this really bad right i'm trying to actually tell you i'm trying to show you different kind of conse the consequences of different decisions that we might make that we might think that oh i'm increasing the gain and nothing else is actually changing i'm trying to show you that all of these things are actually somehow related to each other again going back to gm if i increase gm look at the rn rn is r pi which is beta over gm therefore i'm in a sense i'm decreasing R rn which was supposed to be as high as possible was supposed to be infinity so again I might think that I'm actually increasing the gain, but in a sense for the circuit from the microphone to the amplifier or from any source to any load, uh, I'm actually decreasing or like not making any changes into the, uh, like may, not, not actually doing anything in terms of the level of signal that reaches the speaker. I'm just increasing GM and probably spending more power with no gain in terms of other parameters. Okay, so this slide is trying to show you that the voltage gain um, is somehow related to the output impedance, is related to the input impedance, is related to the headroom voltage or voltage headroom or basically voltage swing, which is well, whatever room that we have left, whatever voltage headroom that we have left before getting to saturation. And it doesn't mean that voltage gain is only related to these things. All of them are somehow related to each other. And you have to be, as a good designer, you have to be really aware of all these relationships so that you can actually uh, do a good job with the with the design of electronic amplifiers and that's that's going to be my job teaching you for the rest of this like this this course i'm going to be teaching you how to actually design amplifiers and amplification circuits while considering all of these parameters at the same time